Hello everybody, so welcome back to Meet the Jugglers Live and today we're very happy to have Ariane uh, Sofia uh, with us and um, I would describe Ariana as a, a very good um, four-armed juggler. Uh, <laughs> just because uh, your, your feet are like hands, you know? And um, mm, 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 mm. So anyway, um, so the idea, let's say, I always say this, the idea of these meet the juggling sessions is so that um, we can get a little bit more depth into our practice and... Um, and, and, and listen to what other jugglers, how their research is, how their practice is, how they got into this, you know, um, because it's not always like easy, you know, and like I always think that the like the real skill in juggling is almost um, how to stay motivated. You know, if I work out how to stay motivated, then then uh, it's all, it all, all goes really well. So. Um, Ariane, so uh, I'm going to pass it straight over to you. Um, just, um, I think it's always really nice to know how people got into juggling, you know, and uh, and um, for some people, you know, it was boom in there immediately. And some people, you know, they had an experience and then let it go and then they came back to it. And but it's like always been like there around. So so I would really, really enjoy uh, hearing, hearing a story. So please. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was a uh, well. First, hello. Uh, thank you for. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hello. <laughs> um, it was for me. It was um, yeah. I said it before. A slow descent into juggling. I didn't uh, start and boom went for it right away. I learned the three ball to skate when I was twelve because my brother was going to a juggling club and I thought okay i'm gonna check that out too and and then yeah i didn't like i was caught by by the whole idea i was doing poi and diablo and devil stick and stilt walking and unicycling and all this um and then it but it took me until 17 or 18 until I really, really got into ball juggling and decided that this is what I want to do. And then it took me until 24 to find out that this was going to be my job. And I'm still not quite sure if I can believe it. So, yeah. It was a lot of friends and meeting great people on the way, I guess, that uh, made me go further and further. Because uh, in the juggling club, it was basically all just lovely people. And the teacher from my school who was there, who taught me the three ball cascade and how to run, ride a unicycle. He was one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life until then. And so, yeah, that was what kept me. And then at 17, 18, when I really fell into it, it was the juggling itself that kept me. I it's just amazing no when something works when when a trick when you see it coming out and you you get it more and more often and you have this amazing sensation of oh yeah da, i'm 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 going to be able to do this at some point um yeah 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 no it's like exactly this that we we're, we're interested in, in in hearing you know as well it's this like um it's um getting things to work and uh and when we get these like little um signals that uh perhaps it, it will actually work this this trick and uh we have these moments you know where where we're like so like in our bodies and so in the space it just all feels like very magical you know and uh and um we almost get really hungry for the, this sort of uh this sort of uh the, um sensations that come back you know and, I, and they are definitely like um positive feedback loops in our brain essentially you know and and all these serotonin not serotonin but uh, dopamine and all sorts of um different hormones going on in, in our brains um so um um just just like to so so now you're in in in, in toulouse no and um so you're training you're training i imagine quite a lot there now so how is your um, how how are your days there? And then we can go a little bit into like 
in terms of tra your training and all sorts of things like this. Okay. And so I I came here for an education, um, which keeps me not extremely busy, but yeah, again, I there is a lot to do, but my day structure is like at the moment I work about three hours a day on my piece. Like I came here to make a long solo. Um, and this is really three hours a day. I, I'm basically doing that. And then there is usually another hour of just technique training and another hour of workout and uh, stretching because I need to keep fit in order to do what I want to do and healthy. And then I play a little violin and go for walks and teach online. And apart from this, because of Corona, I don't really do much <laughs> sleeping, eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also I made the decision to, to really come here and take these four months of education to focus on my artistic growth so also i this is what i'm here for so i don't really do anything else i'm not interested in even if there was partying or something i'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry Adi, 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 education in english that the, uh, you, you like um you're there for a residency is this what you mean no it's um it's a course like how can i describe this it's like a it's it's a bit like a postgraduate course for uh, circus artists. So it's a four month thing where the school here, the, the teachers from the school here accompany people um, in making their own project come true. So they are helping me to make my solo, basically. Okay, okay, got ya, got ya, got ya, got ya. So um, if anybody's watching this live and they have any any questions or they want to like say hello or anything, and then please pop them into the comments, um, just so we <laughs> get like a so uh, Ariane. So um, okay, you do some pretty difficult uh, tricks as well, you know, and um, um, and we could see also that there's also like a there's um, there's a, quite an elaborate artistic research, um, which is part of your part of your training. And um, I would say two things here. Like, uh, how, do you separate like your training from like your from your artistic thing, or or um, or you mix it all together, or you have periods of time? You know, because sometimes we we get like we get into a bit of overwhelm. You know, it's like oh, I've got so many things I've got to do. You know, and we don't realize that we can actually rotate some things. You know, we don't have to do everything every day you know for example or even every week you know some things we can come back to them later and how how do you prioritize things Good question <laughs> yeah. um, so i guess it depends on what i'm working on at the moment so obviously i always prioritize what is important in this moment at the moment I prioritize things that will go into my solo. So I prioritize the, the, the technique, the tricks that go there. But also I don't spend much of my time on just technique training, but much more on research as to what go what, yeah, what, what what does it all mean? Where where will it go? What's what do I want my solo to say in the end? And what kind of juggling do I need for this? What kind of movement quality, which aesthetics, which rhythm? Um, what kind of expression, this kind of thing. Um, but then I do have, um, like I do a lot of different styles of juggling. I do this foot juggling and then I do three ball around the body and then I do, I don't know, very dancey juggling, very relaxed stuff, contact juggling. Sometimes I train numbers and I try to put them into families um, of tricks or like into, a, okay, all this kind of belongs together. And I, um, 
I don't train each family every day. I always take one one thing a day. So today it's going to be anti-Buddhism style foot juggling. And then I only train this. And I put most of my focus on training basics. I love training basics. There is like I spend hours just on throwing one ball into the perfect position on my foot. Because if my basics are good, everything else will be easy. And so I spend a lot of time training this and then, yeah, there is always a trick or um, an idea that I have a certain move that will, that will be in this moment important. So I do this in the end after a long time of focusing on the basics. Yeah, so, so I have a question now for like, let's say you, you like um, go to basics and you're looking for this, how, I mean, obviously, you're not just like um, mechanically repeating it. So wh how, are you, how are you staying present with what you're doing? I mean, if you I don't know how it is for you, eh? but like if I just mechanically repeat something after a while, I get bored and I just don't learn from it, you know. Sure. So like, how are you how are you putting the interest in there? You know. OK, so uh, I love mechanic repetition. <laughs> <laughs> OK, <laughs> because like it's not mechanic repetition, it's um. Well, first of all, it's a it's a certain type of meditation. You no, know? doing something over and over, and then mm, you can always put your focus point somewhere else. Like, yes, I do the same kind of the same movement over and over, but I can check what is my breath doing, what is my what is my head doing, <laughs> what is my little left finger doing, what's my hip doing. So I can always put the focus point somewhere else. And through this, it stays interesting and it will get much better because I, I start checking all everything that is going on in this time. Um, so that's one way to really change the focus point, even though doing the same thing. Um, and then also, I really like inventing little games for myself yes. that teach me something. Like, um, I find a really basic pattern that has the one thing in there that you want to, that you want to train or a, or a little improvisation around this. So, for example, when I wanted to learn to, to catch a ball here on my foot. Yes. Um, what I did was I found all these, all these walks on the floor that would teach me how to how to use my feet and where my feet are in relation to the ball. Um, and then, yeah, finding loads of little silly walks that, um, that deal with this stall, that have it yeah. in there. And with this, uh, yeah, it stays interesting to train it and still kind of technique training. Sure, sure. And I'll ask this, this to you so speci specifically because if we don't find this sort of thing, then we lose interest, you know. And I, and um, I, I even wrote an article about this, like uh, about finding the game. You know, it's like yeah. finding the game that you're doing, and then when we find it, it gets really interesting, you know. And it doesn't have to be like always the more difficult, you know. That's one game, is and, and one game is like find silly walks while we're doing this, or it could be anything whatsoever, you know. Sure. And, uh, so I, this is a very important point for everybody that's watching this, definitely. I think, yeah, the, the, the point is exploration and explore, exploring the, um, the infinite possibilities inside of a tiny frame. So mm -hmm. there is, for example, yeah, again, because I had this example already, the stall on the foot, I can just train to stand on one leg and see where I can move, where I can move this this balance, where I can move my body with this balance. And there's infinite possibilities here, even though it's just one very very small frame. And this can keep me busy for hours. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I could imagine. And um, we're not going to fin finish our conversation here now. But this would this is already this is already enough. You know, this is already okay. well then you're fine. <laughs> this is already a huge takeaway you know and um so it's like um you know it's 
we start to get into asking our questions and getting a little bit more lateral thinking this way, you know, because we're like having questions You're like, well, what if I do this? If What if I change this? I want this. How do I get into this? And uh, and um, actually, when when we start working in a, in a very, let's say, sane way like this, the ideas come to us all over the place, you know, and like uh, things to try out. And uh, and it's this the nurturing this space I find so important. To keep the interest and keep the keep the passion going and um yeah and training training the mind and uh, yeah and everything there is also this thing of um going past the point where it's boring or annoying i find you no know, like especially when when training technique like there is a point where it becomes boring and annoying for sure there, there will be but <laughs> when you manage to go over that then like it's right after where all the creativity happens like just at the point where you are oh this is boring this is boring and you think this for like three seconds and like boom suddenly things start appearing all by themselves because your brain i don't know needs new input <laughs> and starts exploding i or it's my experience anyway to to force myself past the point where it's boring yeah and it's also like a trusting as well you know a trusting the more we trust that there is this thing after the boring the more that we we can handle it as well and uh sure. handle it because you, you know it's just lurking around the corner this thing so um i'm just going to go on to another thing that you you popped out earlier and this is another thing i also try and talk about in, in detail because i find it stresses a lot of artists and jugglers especially this thing about having something to say you know so the people they say to you, what, you have to have something to say. And you're like, what? I'm just juggling, you know. What do I have to say? <laughs> I've got nothing to say. And um, but you know, just through our 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 our, 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 our just being, you know, it, we have something to say. Things to come out. So um, I'd like to hear your thoughts that you're coming out now. Like, what? You know, it's a pretty abstract um, um, means of communication. Juggling, you know. It's, pretty abstract but um it has like um this thing that can open an audience because they can go like wow you know they, i mean we don't want to wow audiences all the time but this this little wow that opens them into cur curiosity and we can bring them wherever wherever we want them to go no so um yeah so how are you working with this uh, what you want to say with your juggling yeah, this is a question that I'm asking myself since a few years. <laughs> it's um, I I find it really difficult, um, but then also it's quite simple, <laughs> I guess. Um, so there is this thing in, 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 in contemporary art now that everybody says, oh, that's a language, dance is a language, juggling is a language, da, da, da. but what does, it, what, what does that mean? Um, and then I, there is a, a beautiful lecture by, uh, by a scientist that I really uh, like, uh, Tim Ingold, um, I think it's called it's it's online on YouTube. One can find it. Um, it's called uh, knowing the senses or something. And he talks about this thing that we uh, when 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 we hear music, it communicates something to us. When we when we play music, we want to communicate something. But he says that it's not that we have an idea in the head and we kind of translate this into music, but it's actually the idea of the music that we have in our head. So, um, so when I, I say I communicate through juggling or I, I have something to say by juggling, for me, it's really the juggling that I have to say. It's not that I want to say, oh, I'm, I'm freezing cold, and then I juggle a sequence in order to tell people that I'm freezing cold. It's no, it's, the juggling that I communicate. Mm. I saw a graffiti when I was like 18, 19 years old and just decided kind of in my head that 
I would become an artist. And this graffiti said, um, I have nothing to say, that's why I'm writing. And I really love this because it's, if I had something to say, I would talk, uh, <laughs> you know, but I'm, I'm actually really bad at talking, I think. Um, it's the juggling that I have to tell people. And I think, sure, there is a million things inside of it. There is like, you can, you can probably, if you want to read stuff into it, you're very welcome to. I read a ton of things into juggling, but yeah, in the end, it's just the juggling and it communicates on a different level than an yeah. expressive language. I would say the urgency, you know, the urgency to be on stage, the urgency to reach out and touch the people somehow, the audience. Like, um, you know, we can communicate in many ways. It doesn't have to be through our eyes. It can, it, you know, really be aware that, um, that, that things are being read and the mood and... Uh, mm. Yes, there is, like, for me, that's that's again two different things because there is the the juggling and then there is the way that the performer feels behaves um like yeah the the mood of the performer like what what my face or my body tension communicates and that's something that is related to the juggling, of course, because the juggling is happening, I'm, I'm doing it. So what I feel is coming from the juggling and this also communicates, but then there is also, there is also something in the juggling just by itself without my commentary that I think communicates something. And yeah, it's not like, it's not an, an explicit, Thing, but I do think people understand it. No, there is there is the rhythm, there is the aesthetics of it, there is um, I don't know the sound that it makes, the, the where it makes us look, um, where it brings our eyes, how it makes us breathe. These are these are things that don't have anything to do with what my face is doing or what my body is doing in this moment. It's the juggling itself that makes this happen. Um, how it's super cool. I'm not oh, no, 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 I follow you. I follow you. It's like, um, it's as if we had like loads of stones on a stage and we were like moving the stones about somehow, you know, shh, shh, and, and slowly creating something in this way. I, um, I quite enjoy the thought, you know, of, um, of a juggler uniting with the juggling through the action of, through, through the action of juggling somehow, you know. It's like there's a tendency to for the juggler to want to step back from his juggling, but I think when it's really simple and you show up fully in what you're doing, then I think it's perfect. You know, like when we do too much, I agree. You know, it becomes a little bit um, can be grotesque. You know, and it can be forced as well. Um, <laughs> this is a, a coin bonus. Anyway, so. Um, um let's go on to like a little mini um uh tutorial Ariane. so yes, is there... simple, not the difficult questions please <laughs> no 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 with with uh one with one ball now just um if you'd like to show some things you're working on something I think we've, i'm working on i think we've i think we've talked enough now like you said like you like you like basic things it's so like for you what are the basics mm-hmm so um, I have, because you said something about like favorite trick, I was uh, thinking a bit what would be my favorite trick and I realized I have too many favorite tricks. <laughs> um, but there is one little thing that also I can show in this tiny space here. <laughs> and I thought it would be a nice thing. So it's a lying down trick. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, and it's just this. <laughs> and it can happen with four balls. Whoops. Yeah. 
and you're just feeding them totally you're, not looking. you're just feeding them because you're not looking at them <laughs> no no i don't need to look at them they do that all by themselves these days <laughs> um so i don't know shall i try to explain what i'm doing yeah sure please mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean the ball is rolling over my foot i guess that's quite obvious and the way I trained it was that I would really go from half point into flex with the ball balanced up here. Yeah. And once this movement gets comfortable with half point flex, it's really painful here. Um, but when this gets comfortable, we can try to bring the ball from like the toes, slowly, slowly roll it back and to the front again and it's really good flexibility training for the feet and also opened up all the catches there for me to train this row and then that's the row just with the foot and then like the movement when i do this actually comes from the hip so the rest of my leg it's like it's it's long, but it's uh, relatively relaxed. I try to have only as much tension as needed. Um, and then I'm in this like super flexed position with the ball still balanced. And then just from the hip, I try to roll the ball. And I can do yeah, it. So not from your knee. My knee doesn't move much, no. It sometimes needs to move because I lose the balance and I need to catch it again. And then I, I utilize my knee to, uh, to adjust the balance point. But it's really the hip that does the movement. And it looks very funny. <laughs> it does indeed. It looks very funny. <laughs> And I, I really love the sensation of it because, yeah, it's it's like a foot massage um, that you do for yourself. And also, it just, yeah, it, it totally trained my feet to be able to do, to do the catches. So that was pretty good. Um, for this, I really love it. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Um, Hmm. And apart from this, like I'm um, because the the past few years I spent mostly working with a Jew that was all about antipodism with my partner Roxana. And uh, yeah, the the whole show we we juggle an antipodism style. Um, and. Yeah, after doing this technique like really thoroughly for many years, I feel like, okay, I need something else now. So lately I'm really into body throws, especially body throws to foot catches. So I try to, to do all the back crosses or uh, I don't know, Stefan Singh calls this one spiral. Yeah. All this, but to the... Uh, to my to my feet because I really want to utilize my whole body. I don't just yes. want to use my hands or so for juggling. I find this really. I, I I'm not interested in standing there and throwing balls high and many of them. And then also, um, I try to to do the foot catches or the foot throws to the body catches and see how this can make me move. I really like it when, when it's the balls that force me to move. So people always think about like, oh, mixing dance and juggling. And I think juggling is dancing because the balls, if you, if you let them, <laughs> they will make you move and they will make you move in very interesting and special and uh, unique ways. Um, so, just thinking about what happens when I listen to the body making me move. Um, yeah, I don't have much space here, so it's hard to show. Well, that was nice, anyway. I liked, I enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Tuck, walk, walk, tuck, walk, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So, um, Adrian, um, so um, I often ask this question as well. Like, um, um, any advice you've given to yourself ten years ago, fifteen years ago, things you know now that you didn't know before. Concerning uh, jumping and. Believe in your sensations. Okay, this is cool, eh? But what do you mean by this? You know, there are lots of jugglers. They are like, what do you mean? You know, what what is? It, I'm actually referring to the interview you did with uh, Idris. Okay. <laughs> I I find it I found it really inspiring to listen to, um, and because he mentioned this thing of like he was not interested in training five clubs. So he didn't waste any time on it and just instead research, researched his three clubs up, yeah, up to the point where he is now, obviously. And I think that's really amazing because when I, when I started, I was told so many times like, oh, you need to learn this or you need to learn that. Oh, if you don't juggle five balls, you're not a real juggler. If you don't juggle seven balls, you're not a real juggler. Or you have to learn side swaps. You have to do that. And like, it's all interesting and it's all valid. I, I trained my five balls, I trained my seven balls. It taught me a lot and I'm, I'm happy I did it, but I should have more listened to myself and to like, hey, actually what you want to learn is long body rolls. What you want to learn is crazy body catches. What you want to learn is how to charge through a room and go crazy with one, two, three balls. And I do sometimes wish that I would have spent more time on that um, instead of learning how to do 7531. Even though it's a beautiful trick and everybody who wants to learn it should really go for it. Like, it's so pleasing aesthetically. I, but it's not what I... I was never interested in seeing this on stage and putting this on stage. And I was interested in going on stage with my juggling. So, yeah, I think this believe in your needs and uh, trust this thing of when you have a feeling, hey, it's this that I want to go for. Then don't let people tell you that you're like not a real juggler because you don't do this. Um, yeah, this kind of thing. Yeah, no, no. And it's never too late, eh, Ariane? <laughs> <laughs> you can always change your mind you know all people can always change their minds so uh, perhaps the last thing i'm interested in seeing that you're in like you're you're creating things now like how is your creative process you like you're building pieces here and there and then you try and link them together or you're creating sentences or like like a couple of words together or or like uh, you're coming from a bigger concept and then going to the smaller or how um, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm always really jealous of people who have actual methods and use them. Um, I'm not like um, this. No, I'm sure you do have a method though anyway, I'm sure. Like, I, of course I have methods, um, but it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm using, I'm, I'm not consistent at all. I really just try to go along and sometimes I wait around for three weeks and then I suddenly explode <laughs> and I'm like, ah, yeah, finally, it's all coming together. Oh, I get it now. Um, no, I, do no, try to, oh, I do try to structure, of course, to like, I have a big wall there with loads of post-its <laughs> that help me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and I, I improvise a lot um, and I show a lot. That's probably a method that I have. I show a lot to friends, to people who know, like it's scary. As... Yeah, and yeah. you show yourself as well. Huh? And you watch, watch your own improvisations, though, if you record them or not. Yeah, I do <laughs> sometimes, but I always hated watching myself. Because I find it terrible. 
terrible what I do. I look at it and I'm like, oh God, everything's so unclean. And, da, da, da. and then like in the improvisation, you felt great and you were like, oh yeah, it's really coming out. And then you watch it later and you're like, oh, but it's ugly. <laughs> so I don't want to destroy that feeling. Um, sure, when it comes to really writing and clarifying things, then I I record it and I see, but for the improvisations, I mostly listen to what I feel and then I write down afterwards what was good and what, yeah, this, again, this thing of, of trusting about, trusting in what you like, like, there, you know what you like if you learn to listen to it and, it, and taking what you like and asking yourself questions about it on many levels will get people somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> At least it brought me somewhere. I'm not sure, it brought me to Toulouse. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 this is, um, this is very important. And I think this is true for everybody, you know, true for everybody, you know, so many people do things that they're, it's not really their thing. Yes, because they, when I have it too, so often I try to aspire to an idea rather than finding out what it is that I need. Mm. And um, yeah, I try to stop that now. Okay, Arian, this has um, been a very uh, interesting conversation and uh, I think lots of really like cool things have come out of this important things you know that um you know some circus schools they they go into detail in this sort of thing but not so many you know it's like uh like find your like what you're saying you know find what your needs are find your things and uh mm. yeah and yeah. i think yeah this this thing of really sharing all the time talk to people about what you want you will it will teach you what you want, um, show people what you want to do. It might be crap <laughs> for the beginning, but it will get better through showing it and listen only yeah. to the feedback you want to hear. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 absolutely. You know, it reminds me of, of Peter Brook, you know, he said, um, like, he wanted to become a, a theatre director, you know, he is a Peter Brook, and he, he would say, he would just go around telling everybody that's what he does. He's a theatre director, <laughs> you know, and like that's how he, he and then he started going into, it, you know, so it's, yeah. So we're also touching like designing our own lives somehow a little bit here, you know, the design of them. So anyway, let's not go uh, into this little rabbit hole now. So anyway, uh, I'm going to end this broadcast. going to end this live broadcast now. So end the broadcast. So say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you everybody for watching. Bye, thanks.